Praise rings out 
born again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Give me vitals. Amen. It's so great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It is so great to be alive and living in this day and age. best part about it is the word of God ceases being a theory Amen. and slowly meticulously becoming a reality. Amen. 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 And we are at that point. Yes. And we are seeing it coming to fruition. Yes. People have talked about it and we've heard sermon after sermon after sermon for decades. Right. We're finally seeing the culmination of everything Amen. playing out right before our eyes. Amen. And if we just open and we look for it like I talked about, we can see it. Amen. Oh my. Amen. Oh my. We are lucky and blessed. Yes. Amen. 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 So, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Very familiar scripture. If you can't quote it, I would like to think that at some point in the very near future, you're going to learn to quote it. All scripture, verse 16, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine. For what? Doctrine. For what? Correction. For what else? Instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Glory. I was just thinking about that. When you go buy a house, it doesn't come furnished. Right, right, right. The Word of God is thoroughly furnished. It means it has everything in it yes. that you need right. Amen. Amen. to perform all, all, all Amen. good works. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 11. <coughs> I know what I like to do. I like to buy a house that's fully furnished, <laughs> ready to go, and I can leave my other stuff behind and let the next person either decide to keep it or get rid of it. Right. Yeah. I don't have to move it. Right. Yeah. That's the best part. Yeah. Right. Luke chapter 11. I mean, it's, we're not supposed to have emotional ties to this stuff, anyways, right? Right, right. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I leave my cats behind. <laughs> Not emotionally attached at all. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I'll sneak them off. Luke chapter 11, <laughs> verse 28. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Yes. And when the people were gathered thick together, not then, people were thick. <laughs> the scriptural <laughs> he began to say this is an evil generation mm -hmm. they seek a sign and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet for as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites so shall also the son of man be to this generation the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them for she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold 
a greater than Solomon yes. is here. Amen. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas. Yes. And behold, a greater than Jonas yes. is here. Amen. 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 Our focus first this morning is 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. Dear Lord, I love you, Lord. I appreciate you. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, for we have to gather together and open it, glean from it, learn from it, Lord, and help, it, help us, Lord, to, to pattern our lives after it, I pray in Jesus' name. Work through us and in us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may, may be seated. If we, are if we are to please God, we must listen to and honor God's word. God's word is good for us. Amen. Hold it before you say amen. There's a list. Amen. I love it how people pick and choose. When you say the word of God is good for me, that means every aspect. Right. Amen. In his 2019 State of the Bible report, George Barna examined the behaviors and beliefs of American adults regarding the word of God. And here are a few excerpts from his findings. 5% of the population are Bible-centered. Only 5%. Nineteen percent are Bible engaged. Another nineteen percent are considered Bible friendly. Nine percent are Bible neutral. But that leaves the 48% of America's population are Bible disengaged. Mm -hmm. It is no wonder we are where we are. Value is a relative term. As the old saying is, one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> Proves to us what I consider valuable may have little worth to you. Right. Yeah. Things of little value to me may be your most prized possession. We apply value to things based on our perception of them and what they mean to us. The Word of God is no different. So as the study shows, people value the Word of God differently. However, 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word is designed by God to affect every area of our lives. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but we're going to go through this and we need to be First of all, let's start with honest with ourselves. When I am to ask you how important would you say the Word of God is to you? Be honest. There's nothing wrong 
with admitting to yourself, I do not study it or read it or memorize it or, or let it impact my life like I should. Right. Be honest. Honesty is a rare thing these days. Honest with ourselves, honest with people around us, honest with friends and co-workers. Honesty is a rare thing these days. If you can't be honest with yourself, then you can't be honest with anybody else. Amen. If your Bible creaks when you open it, because you don't open it that much and it crinkles in the in the now I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Amen. So Paul told Timothy that, so number one on the list is good for what? Doctrine. doctrine. Paul told Timothy that the word is profitable for doctrine. If our doctrine is not right, then nothing else really matters. Right. There are two foundations for all biblical theology. Write these down. The foundation of all biblical theology. If you are talking to people who do not adhere to this foundation, They do not understand the theological point behind the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're not talking church, religion, or organization. We're talking biblical, theological foundation. Number one, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. And number two, Jesus, or in Leviticus 11.44, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Amen. There is one God, and he is holy. Amen. Amen. If there are people that argue that point, then don't try to tell me you're a theologian. All you're doing is regurgitating and just repeating what you've heard somebody else say, but you have no personal conviction on the matter. I do not believe that God would say in Deuteronomy, Six and four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and then try to explain three. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to the New Testament, all of a sudden we go from one Lord to three. Right. No. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. God expects us to know who he is and what he is. Amen. He is one God and his and the hero is the Lord our God is one Lord and what he is, he is holy. Amen. Yes. As we study the Bible, we become acquainted with the knowledge of who he is. If you were to study the Word of God like you're supposed to, you will understand that there is only one. If you're going to try to argue another point, then I will have to argue with you that you don't study the Bible. Because studying the Bible, being the inspired Word of God, allows us to be acquainted with him. 
and being acquainted with him is by one thing, knowing who he is. The doctrine of the oneness of God is clearly established in the Word. Deuteronomy 6.4 directly correlates to Colossians 2.9. Here's a New Testament scripture. For in him dwelleth all the full, all, all, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus himself said in John 14 and 9, He that seeth me hath seen the Father. Amen. Yes. Yeah. You got it in black and you got it in red. Amen. If you can't believe that, then you don't study the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord was stated in the old, and Jesus confirmed it in the new. Amen. I am He. Yes, hallelujah. The new birth message is the foundational doctrine of the New Testament church. Don't try to tell me you're of the church of the book of Acts if you don't believe these foundational, this foundational doctrine. Don't try to tell me you got your start in Acts. If you've never been born again, like he told Nicodemus, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. If you have not experienced that in your life, do not try to tell me. I have said it once, and I'll say it again, and I'll, I'll preach it till I'm blue in the face. If you have not experienced the book of Acts, like Jesus said it, right. then the rest of the Bible is not for you. Right. Why? Because the rest of the Bible, as Paul wrote, was to the churches who have been birthed yes. out of right. the Acts yes. experience. Yes. Right. Yes. Don't quote to me your plan of salvation out of a, an epistle. If you've never been through the Acts experience. As a matter of fact, go so far as denying it and saying it's not for today. Then you're saying that your church then isn't relevant for today. Right. Then you're saying your God isn't relevant for today. So you're trying to preach a gospel that's not relevant for today. Because if it was relevant 2,000 years ago, it's relevant today. Amen. Yes. Amen. It takes more than a profession of faith or expressing a love for God. Oh, but I love God. If you don't love Him enough, to understand the doctrine of the Word of God, then you don't love Him. Merely right. attending church and reading the Bible will not save us. Right. Right. We must be born again. As Simon Peter said in Acts 2, 38, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you have not been through that experience, then guess what? The rest of the Bible is not for you right. because you do not qualify right. to read anything past. So if you want to enjoy the lessons of the epistles, mm -hmm. you need to first experience the acts. Right. Amen. Amen. Number two, the Bible is good for what? Doc? 
doctrine and then what? Reproof. Reproof. The same word that leads us to being right in the doctrine will also keep us right in our daily lives. In order for us to live a life that is pleasing to God, we must allow the word to point out error. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, how we live in a day and age when people don't like to be told they're wrong. Mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago as a child In order to get something right, you have to be willing to accept the fact that you are wrong sometimes. Right. And you need to make a correction in your school. Why then would they create red pens? Right. <laughs> Hello? Right. I went to a Christian school. <laughs> The only person who was qualified to carry a red pen <laughs> was a supervisor. <laughs> you could not be caught dead with a red pen. Red pens were because red pens pointed out error. Oh, who would want a red pen anyways? Oh, a red check in your book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, or on your test. Or you hate it when they wrote little notes in red. Yeah, right. Well, this verse and everybody can see it and they're like, oh. Yeah, you got red. You even got a note in red. Yeah. I, mean, I, I hate it because it was like a glowing red. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. Well, we they, we're, we live in the 21st century now. We can't point out one another's errors anymore. So our pens are now colored red, white, and blue. Actually, we can't do that anymore either. We can't be patriotic anymore. So we have to have a neutral color pen. No. Invisible. There is no color. The true color of light is no color. It's only when it's refracted do you see that there's other colors. It's true. And when you take all the colors of the rainbow and you put them together, guess what you get? No color at all. That's what it tells you. Sorry, I did learn something. I bet you it took a red mark for me to learn it. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12 tells us the role the word will play in helping us to discern right from wrong. It states, for the word of God is quick. Mm -hmm. and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit mm -hmm. and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart yes. Ooh. Mm -hmm. the word of God doesn't point out our errors on the surface it points out the errors in our hearts. That's why people don't like it. The word has the power to discern the deepest, most secret thoughts of the heart and mind. And I am running out already. Number three, it's good for what else? Correction. Correction. Thank you. Having a feeling of conviction without a clear direction of what to do about it, leads only to frustration. It would be like raising a child with rules and guidelines, but, but doing nothing to correct them when the child disobeys. Right. Oh, please don't be the parent 
That says, if you're going to do that, I'm going to do this because it is wrong. You're not supposed to be doing that. But then you don't follow through when they do it. You will raise up a generation of kids who do not understand that there are consequences to your actions. We are living in a world today where we have young people out there. We have people out there voting today, they don't even know what they're voting for. Right. But they're going to pay a genuine price if they vote wrong. Right. Amen. There is going to be a price to pay. There's always a price to pay. Right or wrong. There is consequences to our actions. Right. <clears throat> it would be like raising your child the rules without correction. Human nature follows after its own self will. Our go to fallback plan is self will. Why? Because we do not. By nature, correct our errors if we feel that they are right. Well, if there's nobody telling us that the way we think is wrong, right. Lord forbid that in the 21st century you tell somebody you're wrong. Yeah. Well, I have a right to my opinion. Even if it's wrong, why would you hold to a wrong opinion? Right. Because it's your self-interest you're more concerned about. Right. It's not the search or the hunt for truth. Right. It's satisfying your own self-desires and self-will and self-interest. Right. It's always been about ourselves. Hebrews 12 and 6 states, For whom the Lord loveth, he ch chasteneth. Honey, it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. <laughs> and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. He loves us enough to correct us and to discipline us. This is intended to happen primarily through the word of God. The Greek word for correction means, I like this, to restore to its proper condition or make straight. Where would we be if our guide through life was our car's GPS system? I love it. You don't follow her instructions. You'll hear a little voice saying, recalculating, yep. recalculating. And then they're going to try to get you back on the right, straight, and narrow. No matter what. No matter what. You turn here. Yeah, you turn here. Turn left here, then right, and then left again, and then, then and backtrack, and then go right. Now you're finally on the right. Yep. What if she just said, do what you want? <laughs> You're on your own. No signal. <laughs> oh, you passed the left turn. Well, you were supposed to pass, turn two miles back. <laughs> I don't have time to recalculate. Yeah, right. <laughs> you just get somewhat close to where you want to go. <laughs> Hold it. People live their lives like that every day. Oh, we can, we, we can let GPS guide us in the right direction, but we don't dare let the Word of God 
guide us in the right direction. It's different when you're guiding your car rather than guiding my life. Right. You're on your own. I love to create a GPS for wise guys. <laughs> Take me to Walmart. Get there on your own. Haven't you been there enough times by now? It's over there. <laughs> Walmart's a Walmart. You can't miss it. Or I'm going to send them to Walmart, but I'm going to take them to Walmart three towns away. Yes. <laughs> the nearest Walmart, I'm going to guide you to the farthest Walmart. Why am I in California? Well, you wanted to go to Walmart, so I just picked one on the map. Right? That's good, yep. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be I'm sorry! I picked California! Yeah. <laughs> you're the one who followed me! You should have realized you are going the wrong direction when you went through the third state and realized you're no longer in Kansas. <laughs> right then, a little voice. We're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> People live their lives like that. Oh, who am I hurting? You're hurting yourself! Shame on the Word of God and on the church and on me to try to help you! Uh, right. Protect yourself from yourself! Um, yeah. Yes. Right. <clears throat> Ooh, I could preach on that. I need to move on. I love it. The goal of correction is to bring an individual to a better state. <laughs> Not for the sake of this lesson. And it's supposed to be good for what else? The ultimate goal of doctrine, conviction, and reproof is that we might be in a right relationship with God. Without his word to reveal his righteousness to us, we have no pattern to follow in order to live in righteousness. The word hidden in our hearts will keep us on the path of righteousness. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Amen. Not guarantee that you won't. Amen. Please stop being ignorant to think just because you hit the word of the Lord in your heart, you're automatically free from sin. Right. We had the discussion yesterday with somebody. <laughs> what makes us a sinner? This. Right. We studied it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Salvation is of what? The heart. Right. Salvation doesn't save this. Right. Right. We, the rapture doesn't take this. It leaves it behind. Right. I love the, the I, I, I would like them to do a completely new series of Left Behind and you have piles of skin laying on the ground. That's more realistic here, people. The transformation isn't going to all of a sudden take a sinful state, this thing that, that it, it doesn't want. And leave it behind. <clears throat> that I might not sin against God. Amen. The Word of God can't prevent us from sinning, folks. Right. But it can help us to right. maybe might not sin against God. Amen. The grace of God that brought salvation to us becomes our teacher and teaches us righteousness through the word of God. Titus 2, 11 and 12 explains so beautiful how this happens. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should 
live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. The only way to really know righteousness is to be taught it. Why? Because this prevents us from learning it naturally. We need to be taught. I know adults who do not know how to ride a bike because they were never taught. Mm -hmm. A child who is not taught how to walk will never walk. Right. Amen. Here is something I wrote in the margin. The Word of God should fulfill all these aspects in our lives at some point. We cannot pick and choose what aspect we will adhere to and which ones we won't. You can't say, I love the Word of God because it's the doctrine is great, but I'm not so much about the reproof or the correction. Hmm. You can't pick and choose. Either you're going to take it all or none at all. Amen. Living godly means to take on a devout lifestyle. Our devotion to God is seen by the world around us in all that we do. Our lives become proof that the Word of God is in. I just heard something this morning and I thought was fantastic. How salvation and how the Word of God needs to be demonstrated We need to have, the church needs to have great power and the gospel needs to have great power these days Amen. where we have nothing more than just great advice. Yeah. Do we want to be a church that just gives great advice or do we want to be a church that gives great power? Amen. That has great power. Amen. That shows great power. Yes. That demonstrates great power. Amen. Or do we just want to yeah. give people great advice? Amen. Amen. Our devotion to God is seen by the world around us in all that we do. Our lives become proof that the Word of God is profitable to us Amen. and is helping us to become more like Him every day. Yeah. I'm trying to find myself. I'm trying to find myself. No, we need to find God. Right. Amen. We need to find God in us. Yes. And we need to let God shine through us. Amen. Amen. That is what the world is looking for. There are thousands and millions of people out there who say they are Christians. But they have nothing. They are looking for authenticity. Right. And what proves authenticity? Can anybody tell me? Prominence. That gives the history of what you're looking at. Provenance, I believe, is not what the word is. I want, I want, to, I want to see the proof of authenticity. Right. Guess what, church? If we live according to this, we're authentic. If we don't live according to this, every facsimile, a fake, a forgery of the original. Amen. Amen. 
There's your word for the day. I probably pronounced it wrong, but I don't care. It means the same thing. It shows proof of authenticity. Right. When people can trace from now back to the beginning. Amen. So I'll stand.